Hello there and welcome to Morning Prayer from St Wilfrid's Church here in Carverley. It is Wednesday the 1st of March. Uh, it's the first, second Wednesday in Lent. I guess we started last week on Ash Wednesday. I hope your Lent is going well. We'll think a little about what that is as we go through this. Um, one of the things that comes up during Lent are these things called Ember Days. If you're following this on the on the church lectionary site or the, the daily prayer app, you'll see that this is an ember day. Customarily, this is when the church prays for those who are contemplating their calling and vocation, specifically often for those preparing for ordination, those who are going to become deacons or priests in the Church of England, vicars of some sort. Of course, uh, those of you who know me in the parish will be very aware of how not special I am. Um, Not that I say that as a humble brag or anything, but you know, all of God's people are called, and I firmly believe that we all have things that only we are called to do. And I love the vision that the church has put together of calling days when we pray for our vocation ember days. Embers are beautiful things. You get them at the back end of a fire, I'm sure you know. And if you just give them a little more fuel and breathe on them, then new flames spring. Uh, there is much life in things containing embers, which is all of us, and we are all called as are those preparing for ordination, to stir those embers up into flame and heat and light and warmth and joy. So as we come to our time of prayer, uh, our intercessory prayer, later in the prayer, uh, we'll be praying for Lizzie, our incoming curate, who will join us from July, but for all of us that, that we find ways this Lent to cooperate with God and stir up in ourselves more passion for following him well. With that said, by way of an overly long introduction, let us still ourselves and settle into that space where we find God already waiting for us. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you. God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The first psalm appointed for today, the one we'll read, is Psalm 6. O Lord, rebuke me not in your wrath, neither chasten me in your fierce anger, Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am weak. Lord, heal me, for my bones are racked. My soul also shakes with terror. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn again, O Lord, and deliver my soul. Save me for your loving mercy's sake. For in death no one remembers you, and who can give you thanks in the grave? I am weary with my groaning. Every night I drench my pillow and flood my bed with tears. My eyes are wasted with grief and worn away because of all my enemies. Depart from me, all you that do evil, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. All my enemies shall be put to shame and confusion. They shall suddenly turn back in their shame. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 5. Declare this in the house of Jacob, proclaim it in Judah. Hear this, O foolish and senseless people, who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear. Do you not fear me, says the Lord? Do you not tremble before me? I place the sand as a barrier for the seas, a perpetual barrier that it cannot pass. 
Though the waves toss, they cannot prevail. Though they roar, they cannot pass over it. But this people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and gone away. They do not say in their hearts, Let us fear the Lord our God, who gives the rain in its season, the autumn rain and the spring rain, and keeps for us the weeks appointed for the harvest. Your iniquities have turned these away, and your sins have deprived you of good. For scoundrels are found among my people. They take over the goods of others. Like fowlers they set a trap. They catch human beings like a cage full of birds. Their houses are full of treachery. Therefore they have become great and rich. They have grown fat and sleek. They know no limits in deeds of wickedness. They do not judge with justice. The cause of the orphan to make it prosper. And they do not defend the rights of the needy. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Shall I not bring retribution on a nation such as this? An appalling and horrible thing has happened in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule as the prophets direct. My people love to have it so, but what will you do when the end comes? A hard-sounding passage, but a reminder that God's prophets have always spoken of the need for us to stand up for justice, and that normally means standing up for widows and orphans and those who are without. Probably at the moment it means migrants and those people struggling to make ends meet while they strike as their work is not good enough. Let us not be found on the side of those who need the Lord on their side. In the second reading this Lenten Wednesday is from John chapter 5. I have a few more things to say about this, but here is what that book, that gospel reading is. Jesus says this, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that his testimony to me is true. You sent messages to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified on my behalf. You have never heard his voice or seen his form, and yet you do not have his word abiding in you, because you do not believe him who he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that testify on my behalf, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. If another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the one who alone is God? Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom you have set your hope. If you believe Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe what he wrote, how will you believe what I say? There's a lot of sermons that could be preached there, and that's not what morning prayer is for. If that has prompted questions in you, what Jesus is talking about, if you read it in its context, you'll see who he's talking to and and much of what that's about. What struck me was the following. Um, it starts with an astonishing admission from Jesus. I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek to do not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. It's a reminder of that self-emptying thing Though Jesus was fully God and fully human, he really was fully human. The The divinity that was in him wasn't some downloaded computer data bank of God knowledge. He did nothing on his own. As, as he went through life, he responded in a way that we could if we were as well connected with God and with the Holy Spirit as he was. He went through life fully in tune with the Spirit. And that is a thing that we can all aspire to. And we'll never reach that. Of course we won't. I don't say this as a to set a standard that we should beat ourselves up about, but an inspiration that we can always get closer. And that we shouldn't testify about ourselves. As he said, if I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. 
the Spirit will testify about us, but our lives should as well. We should all be seeking to live lives that point people to joy, to God, to Jesus. It was Ash Wednesday last week, and many of us had ash crosses on our head. And it starts questions with people, doesn't it, to walk around with something visibly pointing people to Jesus. I get that a lot. I have this that I walk around with. We can't all put dog collars on. But my hope is that we would all lead lives of such extravagant peace and joy and mercy and grace and humility and love that our lives are a testimony about the work Jesus is about in us. And that's what that's what Lent is, is recognising that we can do better, that we yearn to do better, we don't need to do better, we are loved and accepted anyway, but we spend a bit more time cooperating with God as he grows that in us. We help him to garden good stuff in the soil that he's making of us. All those trite analogies. Yeah. And so we respond with the Benedictus. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So let us pray for the Church and the world, and thank God for his goodness. We thank you that you promise to send us shepherds after your own heart to care for ours. And we pray for all those in leadership over us, for our bishops, for priests everywhere, especially those priests here in this parish. And we pray for all those exploring ordination at this time or preparing for it. We thank you for them, for the work they will do. And we thank you for Lizzie. Would you bless, strengthen and encourage her as she prepares to join us? Would there be just the right things for her to do and the people for her to love and guide and learn from and with as she is here? But more than this, Lord, would you blow on the embers in each of our hearts? Help us to stir up with you the fire and light and warmth that you bring life in all its fullness. Help us to be flames that draw people to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for, we pray for the international migrants and refugees, all those who are fleeing countries which are not good enough for them, or are even dangerous, oppressive and violent places. We lament for our part as a nation over the last few hundred years in creating many of the issues that drive people to us. Help us to see our part in that as we consider our part in making amends. Help us to deal with them justly, to work out what our fair share of housing those without homes is. Help us to seek genuinely to do good and to bear some cost. And may every community in this land be one that seeks to model your love to all people. 
And we pray for our leaders, nationally and internationally, that they have wisdom and compassion as they make decisions about how best to welcome those refugees and migrants, but also how to reduce the harms in the world that cause people to need to flee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those struggling with economic inequality in this country, Lord. Though we are rich, many of us are poor and are poorly treated and feel the need to be on strike and stand up for themselves. We call for an end to these strikes, but an end brought about by peace and justice and enough for all and goodwill. And that especially our many public servants feel valued that we get the most out of them and treat them with the dignity all people, but especially those who serve us, deserve. Help us to wrestle more honestly with the conversations we need to have in this country and to cherish those who work on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We turn to our prayer card for this month and you can pick these up in church we'll have a new one every month we'll be starting a new one any minute now but the one I have as we prepare this video Lord would you be with Claire as she continues to be supported in hospital with John as he has or recovers from his eye operation for Esther and her family as they love her and make her comfortable in her final days and come to terms with their grief and for Eileen and her family, would you bless her with a good, kind and swift end and help them to grieve. We pray for Tracy's mum, for Elizabeth as she undertakes memory tests, for Natalie for healing as she receives treatment, and for Lydia for strength and guidance in the challenges she will face this year. And we leave a moment of space now for you to bring before God, who is always listening, the things that are on your heart. Almighty God, who called your servant David to be a faithful and wise steward of your mysteries for the people of Wales, in your mercy, grant that following his purity of life and zeal for the gospel of Christ, we may with him receive the crown of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's the end of our time today. A morning prayer, evening prayer, whenever you're praying it on this St. David's Day, this Ember Day in Lent. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go well through your days.